Hey, it's Shames, and welcome to another edition of ADTube Digest, where we go over the best though and not so best though anime YouTube videos to come out this week from the 14th of February to the 21st of February. There was going to be one video that I didn't think was very good, but it was too long and I stopped watching. It was super cringe, so I'm going to talk about some videos I thought were decent. They were pretty good. I enjoyed them. And this first one, who would have fucking thought? I can't believe it. It's anime every day. Their last upload was four years ago. <laughs> and um, it, I would have like put their like announcement video in, um, but they did put they did put like a, an actual video um, to this week, which was great. But it's not Lewis. Here's the thing. Um, so Lewis did like a thing where like, you know, he couldn't really keep up with it, you know, kind of whatever. And um, so he gave his channel to somebody else. Uh, Jay, I believe is his name. Um, and then he was saying, I, th I think in the announcement video, it's a little while since I watched it, where they were like, I think they were referring to themselves to like said, multiple people. So maybe there's multiple people working on this and that's cool. Um, so it's not Lewis. And they're saying that Lewis could pop in uh, and place it, it, you know, come back for some things. I'm like, that, that, that's nice. It'll leave the door open at least. It's not like gone forever. Um, but like, this is so just interesting. I never... I've never seen anything like this on YouTube where like someone just kind of gives their channel like, oh, it has like almost 100,000 subscribers. Let's just give it to somebody else. Um, interesting. But and all the videos are staying up, too. So this is a new one. Uh, the anime recorded in space and they're talking about Space Brothers. It's just kind of a, a light recommendation video. And they do talk about how um, one of the astronauts that went to the International Space Station recorded some dialogue. And it was actually kind of a, a Q&A of sorts, and I believe it's anime original. So that's really nice and interesting. I like that they, they kind of highlight that, that part, and it's a general talk about Space Brothers and why it's cool and why you should watch it. It's it's um, nothing too sparkly or anything. And it doesn't it didn't have that um, visual flair that I think anime every day was kind of known for, I think. Because, like, I mean, Lewis's stuff was great because he was talking about, like, older stuff. But he was also giving it like a kind of a nice polish to it like the kind of the effects and the um the aesthetics of the video were very distinctive um and this video it it doesn't really have much distinction to it it's really just clip selection and kind of all over the place clip selection because i think like the beginning there's a lot of montages going through and um i will say one of my patrons uh pointed out that th they may have taken an a, a couple amvs from uh for their in for their um uh their welcome back like their kind of intro video that they posted also this week um which is not great not a good look um and there's no way to confirm or prove or deny this thing but there is some there, there's a bit of debatability for it but i will say that, that there was something with this space brothers video where like a lot of editing was going on at once that see that it seemed weird you know what i mean um not trying to call you out or anything or like throw shade or something um i would just think that it's you know something kind of noticeable maybe for more keener viewers and uh you know not the best practice if you were doing that i'm not like accusing you or something there's no way to definitively prove it unless you go out and find the video or something and it's like a witch hunt at that point it's not not really a uh, use in doing that in my opinion but i just wanted to point that out i, I did kind of notice something similar to that there was a bit of a dissonance uh, or disconnect where there was a, something about the editing in that where I'm like, hmm, um, as well as like putting in some like some of the uses with like subtitles while the while you're talking over something like obviously like if you're showing a scene and that subs it like that's fine. But like little things like that. And I hate to just be nitpicking the, the visual stuff. Right. But the thing is, is right. They, you know, this what I came to every anime every day for initially was was that visual polish you know um so the lack of that is is something that i i would want to point out but like you know i don't want to go too hard on you or anything i still enjoyed the video and and i think a lot of the, the viewers appreciated it because yeah space brothers is not really talked about all that much i still haven't seen it um it's certainly one of the more under undervalued ones perhaps underwatched. um everyone i've heard who have seen it loves it so it must be really really good so I'm really happy that you're talking about it and stuff. It's just the you know, some things to consider in that in that regard in terms of like the visuals, I guess. But maybe you know you just get better at those sorts of things, I guess. Uh, anyway, I'm really happy that this is that you guys are 
making more content and, and the, the channels alive in some capacity because it was really one of my favorite youtube channels like you know in terms of anime um for a very very long time and, and really and certainly inspired me and and what the stuff that i make um so yeah no i'm just really happy to see it back and uh i like the video it was good Kaiser Shonen uh, put out a Kingdom Hearts video. I think it's the first time I'm talking about him on this channel. Uh, but he sent me the video and you know wanted my wanted my feedback on it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna guarantee it's on Digest or something. Um, but I did think it was enough that I, I wanted to talk about it. Um, it's it's referring to this particular cutscene uh, from one of the spin-off games, and I like the angle that he took it from, where it's like, you know, it's not one of those. It's not like a central. You you might. This scene might be something you skip out on, potentially, but this is something that, that has a lot of value and a lot of interesting thematic stuff and represents, you know, what he likes about Kingdom Hearts as a whole. And I think that was a good angle to take it at. Um, and he breaks it down very uh, kind of scene by scene, almost, um, and really, you know, admiring the vocal performances and the, the execution of the scene, the, the thematic stuff around it. Uh, I'll admit a lot of it kind of zipped past me because <laughs> or i wasn't totally tuned in for a lot of it because i haven't played kingdom hearts <laughs> you know i think that this is definitely one of those series it would be like like making a video on like the trails games you know uh or xenoblade or something where um i think if you're into it and if you you know it, you're familiar with it and, and then this video is awesome right um especially if you kind of into the whole thing and i'm not saying kaiser did a poor job of like giving you the whole backstory so not even a you know a newcomer like me can understand it um i think it's a i think it does a decent enough job where i can follow it basically but i think especially when when kaiser starts to kind of like indulge in the the broader context of kingdom hearts he's kind of ex i feels like he's kind of expecting he's expecting you to kind of understand the broader thing as if you kind of played those games and that's not a bad thing not at all. I mean, it's the same thing with like my Gurren Lagann video, right? Like I kind of just talk about it pretty frankly as if you've seen um, Gurren Lagann or even my Lupin video where um, I would like you to be at least familiar with it so I don't have to be like, he's a thief. You know what I mean? Um, and I totally get that. It's good to make videos like this, especially, you know, if you want to be focusing on the kind of the meat of it and you don't want to bloat the video with all the context around it, right? Um, but I would say that, you know... Uh, there was something about the the game the the visuals with this that was it it did make it a little less engaging to 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 win it. I remember there was some moments where it's like it felt like you were showing moments that didn't seem relevant or or just like just kind of like filler footage, you know what I mean? And that's tough. That is really really that's one of the the hardest things about making videos is what the fuck do I put here, <laughs> you know? What the fuck do I show when I uh, I'm just talking generally or whatever. And uh, that is really difficult. And so it is kind of a matter of like finding an aesthetic or finding something to show or, or condensing things. And maybe if, it, if there's something there that's kind of fillery footage or something, but finding a way to keep in, making it engaging all the way through as a visual experience on top of it being auditory. Because it ended up for me, I, it ended up like, I just kind of ended up listening to it more than watching it because a lot of it felt similar and there was, you know, my eyes would eventually kind of drift off. It wasn't, I wasn't fixated on the whole thing as a visual experience. And then, and, and I've talked about this before, where like, if you're not focused, if it's a video and the person is kind of, inst kind of feels like they can just click onto Twitter and, and <laughs> just listen to the video, which a lot of people end up doing, um, you know, how much of that do you end up really absorbing and how much of it, you know, how much better could it, you know, it, it's only so good when it when you do that right and it's also you know it, it, it's, it's it's too bad because you worked on those the you you it's not like a black screen so you you did put a lot of thought and effort into the putting the visuals in. so it stinks when people want to click off and stuff um so it really is kind of media, media and so i mean yeah it's tough because it's especially when like you're talking about a particular scene and it can get really repetitive in terms of showing the same stuff over and over, especially when like, I think the visuals of Kingdom Hearts, to me, it doesn't have that, I don't know, distinction to them, especially as a newcomer, especially as someone that I've not played Kingdom Hearts or anything like that. All of it kind of feels similar. I don't get like the, the base, like, oh, this scene, this scene, this scene, the general structure of it. Um, so, I mean, it's a, I think it's difficult for me to, to, to talk about this one. Um, but I think you did a pretty thorough job, it seems. And I liked the multiple angles that you're, you're taking it from. 
and again the the especially the conceit uh, i the conceit that i kind of took from that i thought was interesting was that you were analyzing a scene specifically from a game that maybe not many people have played uh from the if they've played kingdom hearts and maybe even the first all three of them but they had they weren't like super fans to want to play everything right well but the, you know maybe people who get into kingdom hearts and like kingdom hearts like you're gonna play all of them sort of deal because maybe like the story and the lore is just that compelling to you I, I can totally understand that i think i could get really obsessed if i like something you know like if, if um i'm playing legends arc uh pokemon legends arceus um I've normally never really got invested in collecting all of the Pokemon, but when the incentive is presented to me in that way, then then I have more of an, you know, I end up doing it, and I'm getting end up getting very obsessive about it. Something about the way the game is designed, I guess. So I think Kingdom Hearts probably um, incorporates that, but it's an, it's interesting in that way. Um, yeah, but I, I I enjoyed the video, um, and you, I think you keep you keep engage uh, like energy up the whole way through. It doesn't feel like it trails off in the weeds or something like that and you're constantly kind of adding some some de some um deprecating jokes towards the franchise because it seems like kind of a, a wacky mess in places so you can kind of poke fun at it in in places here or there so i think you kind of keep it throughout and also like uh through the script was like a lot of uh oh i'll get back to that in a sec or i'll, I'll do the you know kind of overreach not overreach i don't know what to call it you know when you when you uh you're giving acknowledgement to the audience that um you'll talk about certain aspects in a second but you have a, a plan in mind it shows that you kind of keep a focus on it i kind of like those moments too yeah I, I, um i enjoyed the video it was a good it was a nice time another creator i think this is the first time i'm talking about them omrits the real ams i don't know if uh if i pronounced that right the worst kind of comedy in anime and you can tell the thumbnail is exact. You know exactly what he's talking about, which is nice. And um, he's also incorporating the comedy from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as well as uh, Housing Ultimate. And those two in particular, I actually thought was kind of interesting that there's a potential further exploration of this idea. Um, if you maybe if you compared Brotherhood to the original Full Metal Alchemist, which I'm pretty sure doesn't have this kind of comedy, or at least as emphasize, emphasized as Brotherhood. Um, and I'm not familiar with the original Helsing TV series, but perhaps there was sort of a difference between Ultimate and original Helsing. Um, maybe there's something there that you can kind of give a contrast to, where, oh, you don't need this kind of comedy, or this is the way this show does comedy. It's from the same franchise. Whereas if you take, when he talks about like Gintama, it just, I easily kind of, if, he fig finagles a way to it's like oh yeah this one works because it's gintama that's kind of how it came off came off to me as as a, a trademark gintama hater <laughs> you know um you know it, to me it would, like i also was hoping that like maybe you do you do give examples but i don't think you express any examples like through the script it was like let's talk about this one scene in this scene that you give the context and then he shouts this and then you, you don't even have to play the whole thing if you if you want to avoid copyright and stuff you can kind of describe the whole thing and you can really emphasize why this was annoying in this particular aspect i think you did get to the a good point with the demon slayer um example where um you're talking about i think what's not working here is that when zenitsu does this big reaction thing tanjiro doesn't really react in any tangible way uh, Tanjiro tangible <laughs> um, and so it doesn't go anywhere so the joke was his crazy expression and his yelling and for a lot of people that's not really interesting or not that funny and it may perhaps other it elicits different reactions that was not intended like this is obnoxious this is grating this is uh, not it, this is like especially with like Brotherhood maybe where it's so plot driven and stuff like this is a distraction like this this isn't they're they're spending so much time on this thing that's useless to me whereas i'd rather them spend time on this other thing that's more interesting in the show um and, and things like that i'm not to put that one in i'm just speculating on the full man aquas brotherhood example it's not like he um, said that particularly but like yeah i don't know i i really like this kind of rumination on anime as a whole um without like having to 
do any big research or anything like that. It's sort of just, this is my experience. And um, I also really like the Golden Kamui example. Um, it's like, I don't know how they managed to do it, where they just kind of, there's no yelling, I think, is was his, his main thing. It's like, they kind of mostly do the facial expressions, but there's no big yelling. That, that might be the, the difference there. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I do I do like you talked about. I also uh, mentioned Arya, which is which is a good example, I think. Um, and it reminded me that it's it's sort of similar to a video idea that I'm going to be working on soon, hopefully. But you know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I don't guarantee anything. Um, but I really like these kinds of ruminations, and I think you articulated it fairly well. Um, but I, I think there was there was definitely I was at the end I was sort of feeling like there could be more to this, you know, and like you could um, like further, because I did feel at some points you were cir you, cyclical, like I think you're kind of repeating yourself a couple of times. And it, it also emphasized that by the clip selection, like there was a lot of um, same, <laughs> the same sh uh, shots and things like that. So it felt like the video was almost repeating itself, both visually and script wise, audially, I guess. Um, so that was something I was like, that maybe was what I was thinking it was like, ah, if I can only get more, if we explore this idea a little more th thoroughly, even if just like, even if it's like a 30 second point or something, it's something new, but it just felt very, as I'm doing right now, I'm repeating myself too. <laughs> but it, you see, I'm unscripted, you know, I, I think there's a different, not to, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I did enjoy this though. I thought it was interesting. I, yeah, I say that every goddamn time. I'm sorry. Yeah, I like the video. Nice job. I was happy to see this video on Masked Man, uh, the manga that inspired Berserk. He's talking about Violence Jack. Um, and I think it was smart that he pretty much focuses on the references and the explicit, like, oh, yeah, that that's the, the Berserk. Yeah, or uh, this particular, like, little reference. It's kind of like a reference video of sorts. I think I, I, I did enjoy that approach. And he didn't dwell too much on, like, how good of a story it is in terms of its quality. He does mention that like towards the very end, um, which is, which is nice because it kind of, maybe if that's a lingering question for his audience, um, but he sets a lot of that aside to focus more on the inspiration part. Um, I just like this exercise really and uh, exploring more of the retro stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> it's not, not much else I can say about that one. Um, I, I, I like the, the, the exercise, really. Uh, yeah, it was nice. It was a good job. <laughs> Sorry, again, I don't have too much else to say. But I, I enjoyed it. It was cool. Yay, Taser Lad's back. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not like an avid, like I've seen all your videos or anything like that. But um, it's just nice to see someone who, uh, you know, takes a nine-month hiatus. And they're like, yeah, I'm back and things. Um, that's nice. I also appreciate the, uh, the thumbnail being drawn by you I, i'm pretty sure that's your job your, your your style is very distinct um there's something about the face that just feels very like similar and kind of like a, a particular design of sorts which is really nice um but it's good to see that and uh he's talking about my dress up darling immediately found an audience and, and just talking about how much he likes it um very general video uh, um <laughs> i'm sorry i don't have any particular points i guess um, I just kind of liked it and you know what's really one thing I noticed is that you seem to have kind of a very different perspective not like on the show but in, in terms of your references and clip select like not clip selection but like when you reference something like when you just brought up like Ted Lasso or something I was like huh okay <laughs> you know I was like I don't see that ever you know because especially because a lot of us, um, <laughs> you know, anime YouTubers and stuff, we kind of watch a lot of the same things, you know, or we kind of have this vernacular of sorts. And I don't know. I just think seeing a media mix or just sort of like um, different referencing different things and your perspective was it was nice, actually. Um, and also bringing more of yourself into the into the videos, too, and talking about how, oh, yeah, I haven't been up in the videos, but I've been wanting to... Uh, I've just been wanting to edit things and the you know Pompey the cinephile like using that footage is like oh that's creative like that's nice um and, and I don't know there's something about your particular um palette I think would be the word yeah and it's, you know I I always really like your perspectives on um a lot of new manga like you're very up on on the date with like the new stuff coming out in Jump and Jump Plus and like 
your 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 palette with when it comes to like manga stuff um and very 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 early early adapter of some of these new titles is, is really interesting and nice um it says it's his perspective i think is very unique and i would love to see more videos like that i knew you were making those videos for a while um but some sort of like i don't know talking more about that stuff is really great i think that's kind of a good niche and direction for you but i, I like this journey i like this uh video a good deal it was it was comfy i enjoyed that nice nice it's good to see you back yeah, it's Bonsai Bop with Psychopaths Suffering for All. Uh, I think this is the first video that they're back back with since, yeah, since Punk War Cartoons 2. Um, it's exciting. I know uh, Lines in Motion did a couple, a little bit of editing for them, and it's not like a, like a star like feature, you know, that like Lines in Motion's doing their crazy editing thing. I think they they tweeted about how like oh it only took me like a day or two to do this section but it takes me weeks to do the thing for my video <laughs> and it's like yeah yeah i feel, I feel that because I've, I've edited a while ago i edited for some other people and there is a distinct difference where you can kind of really crank a video commission and then when you can do your own thing it's it, it takes forever because you really you try a lot of different things you kind of indulge in it i don't know that's just what i've been feeling especially with this recent this video i've been working on which i hopefully get out by the end of the month it's starting to get uh <laughs> it's starting to get close <laughs> i'm trying it but anyway yeah uh i think it's kind of a, a similar video that and i think they're they're going further in on their on um their approach bonsai's approach of um tackling a show in just their way um i like that they kind of referenced other people's videos I was like oh you know free will and things but uh Let's uh, let's take a little detour. Let's take a little down, down that down that road. That's kind of politically charged, or um, and they they are completely unabashed when it terms of like talking about relative relative current events and um, things that are kind of like politically touchy. Maybe and and yeah, I think there is an argument to be made for some people where um, they don't want to hear those uncomfortable topics in something that they're just trying to kill. 20 30 minutes you know they just want to hear something about psychopaths and maybe validate their feelings on it they don't want to hear about actual problems in the world you know but i i i love that i love that they they're willing to do that that sort of thing and bleed subscribe they're like let's see if we can purge any subs this time um they're kind of really cultivating their own audience really relying on patreon being um not selling out i suppose despite very much knowing how to like knowing the game better than most people i just love that that contrast and that um that that mix is so nice um it's it's interesting yeah it's really less about like learning more for me at least it feels like it's learning less about psychopaths which i've not seen actually surprisingly not yet at least um it's it feels like less learning about psychopaths as, a, as an anime and more just using it as a vehicle to talk broader about broader topics like mental health and uh justice you know and things like that um the things that you would expect if someone was going to go that direction but of course this is kind of uncharted territory because a lot of people are afraid to do these sorts of things because they don't want like to kind of deal with the co the comments and the shitty whatever um but they're willing to you know they're totally unabashed and willing to do that so you know v major kudos and props in that way um i did enjoy it as a as a good time you know uh <laughs> it's again it's one of those things where i'm not i'm not personally invested in the same way um but it's a nice time and i always respect their efforts so it's, it's good seeing them back with you know after their month hiatus and things like that and uh looking forward to more hopefully they get more they get more uh, editors and they can start doing this stuff more regularly it'd be sweet and hey anime news network uh mostly uh, particularly ember reviews uh talking about the other pokemon anime um I gotta say, oh, first thing, could we do a different thumbnail? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I just, it's not great. I had to be like nitpicky right off the bat or something, but I just, I looked at it and I was like, mm, I know it's Ember, I know it's gonna be good. I know it's, I know it's a good video, but like, <laughs> it's the cover, man. And then look, I, I've said this every goddamn time, but like, not like I'm, um, I got Artur fucking oh my thumbnails no 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 I know I can I can be really esoteric and up my own ass and uh not good but uh, 
but man, I think he could be a bit better than this. I don't know, the text, I don't know. Um, but I really like the topic. It really is pretty much talking about every other Pokemon anime that, that's been coming out the recently, particularly on YouTube and stuff. And I, I just like that they've used this as, a, as an opportunity to just kind of uh, promote their stuff more and they don't have to do it in such a big major vehicle or something. And the, but though I do like that Ember kind of used this as an excuse to talk about Coco as well, because it is kind of separate from the TV continuity at this point, which I think is a, ultimately a good decision. Ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say more than that, um, <clears throat> but I did really like that he focused mainly on the on all the shorts that came out, even going episode by episode with some of these things, um, being very thorough, especially because a lot of them are so it's like an anthology of sorts. You know, it doesn't feel like a, a series, so it's not it doesn't feel weird to talk about individual episodes in this way. Um, but it kind of remind me of how like the anime encyclopedia talks about Cream Lemon. Uh, they talk about every single episode, <laughs> which is like kind of unusual like they very much don't do that for a lot of people and i think it's because technically i guess or i don't know um cream lemon was kind of made in the same way where it was episode by episode and they're all different and they all kind of have their own thing going on so there was a bit of a you know reason for doing that but it's yeah it's it's just an interesting approach you don't normally see often i guess uh, talking about gotcha and stuff um understand I, I appreciated that it was like yeah i know it's been talked about a lot already but i it it'd be kind of weird that i don't talk about it so it makes sense and um yeah some of these other things yeah hip lep step and all those things um yeah i just really liked how thorough it was and, and honest of course and trying to delineate like why you really like pokemon and uh what makes a good pokemon story and what doesn't so much um, it's c pretty convenient that every Colorado and every Colorado installment was fantastic. And then the other, hey, and, you know, I'm like, oh, I see. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's fine. It's totally fair. I, I, I can tell, um, with the, um, the way you're describing it, I'm like, yeah, I'd probably feel the exact same way. <laughs> um, I just find that funny. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. Also, real balls to you to to keep talking about pokemon after um after they completely screwed you and um the reason your cha original channel got taken down um ultimately you know you're talking how like ultimately it's like your favorite franchise pretty much and um in you're still really willing to talk about it and it's it's great i think you have a very big you know like and uh overview perspective on the series you're not it's not like so much you you admit there's nostalgia there, but like you've seen all of it, you know, what I mean? or it seems like you've seen all of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh yeah, in terms of the like, it's crazy that you're willing to talk about Pokemon, and then you are kind of playing it very safe with the visuals, so it's nothing but screenshots and stills and slow pay, like a slideshow almost. So it is a dis disappointing in that regard. Um, but I get it. <laughs> I completely get it, because um, you want to, you, you know, don't want to deal with that anymore. Um, so it's a fair approach. I think it's fair compromise. It's not the, the most aesthetically pleasing thing, but I, I completely get it. Um, yeah, but I, I, I did enjoy the video. It was a nice listen, especially when like, you know, because of the visuals aren't the most thrilling or, or substantive. I'd had it on. I didn't pull Twitter or anything, but I was actually playing. Uh, Pokemon Legend of RCS why I listened to this video. Yeah, it's a nice long video. I played it on normal speed where all the other was like kind of, you know, uh, longer. <laughs> whatever. Um, and, you know, just kind of vibing to it. It was a nice time. I enjoyed the video. It was a good job. Righto. And that what I thought were the best videos of the week. I was like, wow. This is really, this is on YouTube? Really? <laughs> Some of these. Oh, my God. Uh, but the first one I want to talk about is Funimation. They're putting a series out called Pure Tokyo, and they've put out four episodes in one week. Um, so I have the first episode listed in the description, but you can check out the others on their channel. Uh, the first episode is with manga artist Terumi Nishi, who is the character designer for JoJo Part 4, um, as well as pretty active on Twitter, has, has her own um, uh, YouTube channel too, which is interesting. And, uh, you know, really cool and i didn't know that uh that nishi was making a had a manga that they were working on and uh this video is is kind of a cute is like a interview type of thing while they're doing a speed drawing like a, a time lapse 
uh, speed uh, kind of drawing of sorts of one of their characters from the manga and um, they're just talking and uh, it's it's really nicely polished and stuff and it's it's good questions I really like the the inspiration question they're like oh Shingo Araki um, from like Saint Seiya and Rosa Versailles and all that uh, that was really cool and the rest of the episodes are really interesting too um, very has a lot of variety to it like um, hyper pop and uh, one of them is a cooking show type of thing, learning how to cook u- udon. Um, he they they meet a um, an American or at least a not you know a foreigner basically um, doing vinyl doll like vinyl toys. That was really and then they seeing their toy factory and then handcrafting and making these toys was really interesting. Um, a lot of different variety to it, and it's pretty well well filmed and. Uh, the narrative is really cool and it's edited very nice. The one thing I wanted to say about it, which is strange, is at the end of this first episode, Nishi uh, signs, you know, autographs the picture at the end, and they date it October 2020. I'm like, how long ago was this done? Like, geez, you know? And I, I was surprised because it, it took, maybe there's a lot of episodes or something, but like, they're only five minutes, and um, yeah, they're pretty nicely polished, but like, over a year like this is february when this came out of 2022 october of 2020 over a year so it's, it's surprising to me maybe there was some some sort of net thing i don't know some sort of whatever um also just strange that they're just kind of suddenly dropping this i don't know where this is coming from um but it's it, it, a little weird and mysterious in that regard but the, the pro and result is actually really awesome i really enjoy it um, it's pretty cool. I'm happy they're making stuff like this. Um, but it just seems very kind of limited, limited run series. We'll see how, how many episodes they make. Um, this is really cool. I enjoy it. Clinique, clinique. Uh, <laughs> uh, should anime keep honorifics in the subtitles? I was just realizing I've, I did watch this video twice. Once when it came out and then another time for digest. Cause you know, I, I just do that with Jaden's videos. Um, but I did notice that like, it seems that a lot of the video there he's not talking as much about the suffix not suffix i don't know the 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 thing at the end like coon chan whatever but he's actually referring a lot more to the um the name choice which i thought was really interesting and i i appreciate these uh examples where this way like the character says kurosaki kun but the subs say ichigo it's like why <laughs> right um because there is a there is sort of d- no, I was going to say data, which is kind of dumb. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there is information there that is it informs the character. And it is really weird dissonance when the character is clearly saying one thing and the subs are saying another. And that's not a matter of translation. That really is just like, that's his name and you're using a different name. Right? That is just like, that is strange. Um, and I do, and I, there was something I kind of wish was missing here. That like a, and maybe that would have been a little too technical and I'm just weird. But like... If there was particular official versions where you could cite that are like, yeah, the one that's on Crunchyroll right now, for example, says this at this, you know, and I'm not like trying to be like call them out or something, <laughs> but like, I don't know, that sort of stuff where um, I was, I was, I liked the things with the dub where like, um, oh, they say Chio Chan, but they don't do it for any of the other characters, and then FLCL they do sometimes, but not really. And maybe if you had like, I know you want to avoid copyright and things, but like an example of that, perhaps, I, I don't know. I'm not like, I don't believe you. like, I do, but <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think it went in directions I wasn't expecting and I thought was interesting, but I really like how thorough he is with the three different kind of like, let's try this approach. And here's the the pros to that, but he's he mostly focuses on the cons for all three of them. There's really no, right way to do it it seems where it's like well you kind of yeah so this is a tough it's really tough and i really like conclusions like this is a tough thing and it's not they don't get paid enough to do this to make these decisions it's true and you know i think it really ultimately has to be a case-by-case basis i think all three of them have merits and uh opportunities right uh or you know like a good good usage of them but i do i, I agree that like there's no form, uniform, one size fits all thing. I do think it has to be kind of, but that makes it really difficult to talk about because it's like for this anime, this is great. And, and you know, um, but I did like the kind of went after um, particular localists. It's like, 
don't do this. Just don't do this sort of thing where they, um, you know, they say character says one name and they, they use another one. Like, come on. Um, yeah, that, that sucks. But um, it is interesting. Um, in terms of my first experience with, because I think these, these terms, they're going to come up. You know, like, like uh, a person who's an anime fan, nine times out of ten, they're going to start with a dub, and they might not ever hear these sorts of things, or maybe there's a dub that has them. Um, but even if they never encounter them, if they do dubs, if they ever go to the subtitles, they ever do stuff with a Japanese language, Japanese audio, inevitably they're going to come across them, and that, that there's some, that's something they're going to learn for themselves, and they'll be curious about it because they like this thing. I want to learn. It's it's like if you watch One Piece. And it, <laughs> everything's about One Piece now. Uh, it's like if you watch it and you learn something about it and you want to, this is like your first series or, or something, I don't know. And you look into, you know, there's outside research. And it's not, I don't know if it's gatekeepy is the word, but unless it's something that like you will not get or you will not fully appreciate. The fully appreciate is that's a subjective thing because where's the ceiling to that like now you understand <laughs> you know there's there's you know it i don't know i think it's something that they experience in things i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> but anyway i wanted to mention i did put this in a comment where like my first I th what i was going this where i think i was going with that was that inevitably people are going to find out what these terms are and then i don't think the subs i don't think it matters too much to me at least i understand like closed captioning with when it comes to like um if if the thing is with closed cap with hard of hearing right it's like okay we should put the honorifics in because the hard of hearing will not be able to hear them the thing with it with with at least the i'm not i'm not speaking for discotech here i'm not i'm not i'm just like from my perspective we do closed captions for releases that have english only release is an english only release if it's American cartoon like Sonic or Street Sharks, um, or if it's a, or if we're releasing Shaman King without the Japanese audio because you can't put both for because four kids cut it up a lot and so you can't put both the Japanese and the you can't just swap them. They're completely different video files, so we're releasing all of the English version onto one release and then Japanese in its own release. And the same thing with Metabots. At some point, you know, <laughs> as an example, like because I, I did the closed captions for Metabots and as well as Shaman King and all these titles I just said. And we do that. We, we, we provide the closed captions for those because for the hard of hearing, right? That's what you do closed captions for. Um, but if there's a Japanese version, we just kind of do the subs. We're not going to do a, a closed caption version of the subs where it includes all these honorifics, you know? Uh, that just doesn't, I'm just giving you the, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to speak for discotech. Like we don't do that or, or anything. I'm not trying to say that you can literally just look at our releases and see subs on or off and the subs I've, I've, I've quality checked a lot of, you know, I've been, I've seen a lot of the subs. I haven't seen us use the senpai or the, cha, you know, um, for a lot of, for a lot of these releases. And it's not like a hard and fit, you know. But it's because it's not my department. Anyway, I feel I feel like very stepping on eggshells when I do that because I'm I very I love my job and I, I just you know I don't know. <laughs> but like that, so that's the thing, right? It's like the in terms of the hard of hearing thing, I I do sympathize sympathize with it and I think it, it's something we should consider. But it's you're gonna lose a, like a lot more than just Chan and Senpai and all that if you're hard of hearing. If you're not hearing the Japanese, um, you could have you could hear a lot of. Um, like you know there's a lot of nuance with using watashi or ore or boku you know um or the, the name right there's a lot of nuance in that aspect too and hopefully you can try to figure out an equivalent of that in in the subtitles figure it out you know you know again case by case basis uh but inevitably you're not going to hear that if you're you know um the subs kind of you're not going to put like boku is you're not going to mix that up it gets kind of keikaku right i don't know it's just, it is an interesting subject and very thorny and <laughs> not it not easy at all to um to fully parse and so i really give credit to to jaden for uh <laughs> trying to figure it out i suppose you know um or at least lay it all out in a way that's like here's the full why it's not so simple to just be like oh just do this oh i'll oh, just do that you know there's it's 
there's no easy way, no easy solution to this. So I really appreciated that perspective. Um, looking forward to it. Hopefully the vid does well. I think these vids are the, definitely the ones where I personally look the most forward to because I think you're the best at these sorts of things of fully, um, you have the research behind it, you have the humor, and you have the, again, the production values. Um, and you also have kind of the full perspective, you know, because the way the way you use your jokes and the some of the, like the very beginning of the video where it's like uh, baka, and then this this word that like normal like like very surface level weebs probably won't know, you know, and the, <laughs> the kind of you kind of show your power level when you do that, right? You're like, I'm not just some guy, dude. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not some dude, dude. I, uh, I, you know, you, you've lived in Japan for a, a good while. And it, not to say that that qualifies you automatically, but like, like those little moments like that, that are very subtle, it gives you the, the, the audience of like, oh, oh, he's not just some dude, <laughs> you know? Um, I love that, kind of coming from any a sense of authority and i know maybe you don't want to be called that or anything like that, whatever where he's like oh authority. okay <laughs> but you know what i mean that you, you don't want to just look like you're talking out your ass that's that's the idea here and you know that further welcomes the viewer to listen to what you have to say um and it's also nice that you're not completely hostile in some place i think you're just the best at these sorts of discussions and i hope you do more of them they're great you're great as usual <laughs> Boy mode gaming. You don't. You didn't have to stoop so low, Rushia. What a bitch. Look, dude. I, I know you. I know you were just joshing when like. Oh, you see my video, whatever. Like that's fine. You can send me your video and stuff. Like I. I really appreciate. I wasn't subscribed. Subscribed to boy mode gaming. I gotta tell you though, I had this in the playlist, and I was playing some other videos. I don't even remember what they were, and the next video was this, and I the the first sequence of like showing all the images and they're all synced to somebody I used to know I'm like ooh they know what they're doing and I didn't even I hadn't even looked at the video <laughs> I was it just automatically played I swear to you I did not look at the title or anything and it was just doing the thing I'm like oh what the fuck is this oh <laughs> I'm telling you dude you're just good at this like, I'm sorry like of course I'm gonna talk about it <laughs> Like, oh my god. Um, this is man mode, by the way. He's gonna go, boy, boy, get, it's a shit post. Don't worry. No, it's it's really good. It's a good quality shit post. Are you kidding me? Um, I'm not just putting this off on like some airs or something. I was genuinely hooked the whole time. That doesn't help that, like, I really like this Gautier song. Um, it's so funny because, like, I'm such, like, I'm not like a Gautier fan in the same way, but like, um, I know other songs by him. It's not just the meme song to me. So like hearing it, I, I, I get unironic enjoyment from it. I'm like, I like the song choice a lot, actually. Uh, not just the, like, uh-huh, it's the, <laughs> the one song or whatever. Um, but like, and then this is also just the a kind of subject that I'm completely, not completely, I guess, but like very foreign to me. Ultimately, I don't know any of the VTubers that you're referencing here. I, I saw Pekora named once, but I'm like, I know that one, but you know me, I'm very normie uh, when it comes to VTuber stuff. Um, but I just like that you're talking about that particular thing and you're involving yourself in it. It's always nice seeing you on camera because I just I do think you have a particular presence. There are some people that don't have a camera presence where it's like it does kind of lower, like you know what I mean? It doesn't have a, you know, I don't know. It's um, they don't have as much of a presence to them, I guess. It has, a, it happens. It is what it is. But I think you you especially find really good ways of shooting yourself, and also just your performance in those things is just really interesting. Um, I just really like it. <laughs> I just really enjoy it, and it's it seems very harrowing and mysterious. You don't fully get. It's not like hammered into you what's going on quite so much, but you do give enough visual cue, cues that you can kind of follow what's what's happening of sorts but you don't know the whole extent the full drama of everything um but you can tell with the repetition of the the thing later and and screen to white and like there's there's very deliberate specific things that me as an editor i really pick up on and i really appreciate <laughs> because like i care about this stuff you know and then people are just kind of like yeah whatever it, it's like <laughs> i fucking you know it, it's it's whatever you know and it really it's oh man 
No, I just, I enjoy it. I'm sorry if I put much of a babbling mess in this. But no, seriously, I just, I just really enjoyed it. And I'm not just saying that. Like, it, it really is the beginning where you're like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. And I didn't even recognize it was you until I, um, I looked and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I put this on my watch later. I completely forgot, you know. And, and yeah, um, what was the? Was there anything else? Yeah, the, I did like the little small thing where, um, as the many small things again, but like the small thing where like you focused on a different VTuber during the guest vocals, like when the 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 woman starts singing, it's sort of a it shifts to an alternate kind of a different ish perspective. Um, and you know what else? You know what I I fucking for me, I'm loving perhaps too much when it comes to my when it comes to my AMVs. I I'm using the opacity layers way too much. <laughs> like I, I'm too addic I'm way too addicted to that that feature. But like you do it so you you're very smart and like tactful with it, where it, there's not a ton of layers on it, and it's not super sensory overload. But it's it's just like two really nice and they meld really well that's all you need you know the blade runner 24 9 image with um the concert going on that was perfect i'm like that's real that's all you need to do and for, i always feel like as a you think of it like a cook or something where you put in too much spice <laughs> you put in too many ingredients like this will taste great and it comes becomes like a bit of a soup um i hope I'm not like, you know, I, I worry about that sometimes with me personally. Maybe I'm too on the nose. I don't know. But there it's so charming. I just really enjoy this sorts of thing. And it also just like kind of giving a more personal narrative of sorts and kind of bringing yourself into it. And it's very unique and distinctive. Um, I love it. What are you talking about? I love it. You don't have to. Thank you for shit for letting me know about it because I actually wasn't subscribed to Boy Mode Gaming. Uh, <laughs> and now I am. So, like, yeah, no, that was wonderful. Loved it. Oh my god, Captain Christian, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm actually happy he, um, I think he did change the thumbnail back, because he there was one that was different, and it wasn't part of his color code, color scheme, and I'm like, no! Because <laughs> he, this fucking tryhard, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just um, envious, because I didn't think of it. That, that's why. Because it's, it's such a cool idea with, like, if you ever, if you don't familiar, if you're not familiar with Captain Christian, um, if you go to his channel, all of his thumbnails are color coded so it looks like a rainbow. So he went from red and went to, he cycles all the way to purple and then back to red. And he, every one of his videos are completely different subjects and very media. It's all media, like video essays. But like the thumbnails are just, oh, I can't believe it. It's, it's so not fair. It's not fair. Um, the fucking idea there. It's incredible. But then his editing is, oh, <laughs> it's so funny. Not funny. I'm, I mean, it's, I don't know what it, it's a positive attribute. It's overwhelming, really. So, I mean, it, but it isn't simply the the really tasteful, tactful, creative, un, a surprising, effective, uh, striking. Again, just positive attributes. I can't really. <laughs> the things with his editing is unbelievable. Um, but also his writing. I really like that he, he, obviously puts a lot of like concrete like there's there is parallels here i kind of like the idea that this is this cycle of influence it's kind of loose you know he is kind of manipulating things a little bit whereas like oh this he's not outright stating that this is a reference to this and this is a reference to this but there is this idea of um blade runner of cowboy bebop having inspiration to the original blade runner and then 2049 having inspiration to cowboy bebop and a little bit of Shichuo Watanabe being the the guy who brings Blade Runner to anime with with Blackout. Um, I thought that was also a really interesting point. But there's like there's little points that it, there are concrete, but it's really indulgent in kind of this synchronicity and, and this marriage between the two, and they're weaving in and out, and he's editing it in such a way that like this is responding to this thing, this is responding to this, and back and forth like a conversation, and the use of the music as well as um his narration that just feels very indulgent and kind of like but just poetic it's just not indulgent in a bad way i think there is indulgent in a bad way where it's not effective <laughs> where it's like it's it's effective to you it's indulgent it's self-indulgent to you and you like it but it's not like a 
it's it doesn't have an artistry or poet poetry that an, an individual like a newcomer like someone who's just watching your video can appreciate there's just something about his writing that just seems very poetic and flowy and just really incredible like it, it's an artistry in and of itself he's not really giving you the information and then making the video pretty <laughs> which i think a lot of us do um he's he's marrying the art he has artistry in his writing on top of the music selection on top of the, the, all these different components uh it's a gorgeous video and also just like really cool that he got steve bloom to read the um the some of the the dialogue from blade runner stuff and it's like Oh, of course you got Steve Bloom to do that because that's cool. Like you can't like Steve like getting the chance to perform this kind of really cool monologue from from Blade Runner. I'm like I yeah, as an actor, like that's awesome. Uh, of course he did, but like it's cool that he did either way for like this video. Um, wonderful, featuring Spike. I, mean, I think if he said Steve Bloom, people would understand. Just saying, but uh, yeah, that un really really cool. Uh, but also some original animation and some original. Uh, illustration when they're using he's using like the blade runner characters in the bebop opening and he's you know and there's an actual invention here and it he's not just like taking from stuff um although he isn't in other places i couldn't believe it <laughs> it's like really um wonderful idea and gorgeous really cool loved it and i'm jealous insanely jealous right yeah, that, that's the best kind of video, isn't it? Where you're just kind of irritated how good it is. <laughs> it gets under your skin. Oh, man, it's it's wonderful. And it, it, it was perfect with, like, the end, you know, I'm not going to spoil the ending to you, but the the, the last ending shot and the, the thing that you should, you know, I'm like, okay, all right, you made your point, <laughs> you know? It's, like, it's too good. It's, it's unreal. Fuck. But not 30 minutes of that <laughs> it's all that but 30 minutes and really specifically informative and um and other things that are make it just make it better for me unreal pause and select the J japan the platform superpower i don't think he's made a better video than this i don't i don't remember i don't know like he does he it has a lot of the, the things from his previous videos sure certainly but the extra mile that he's put in the visuals here with the live action sets and integrating that with editing and the, the all the lighting and after effect stuff that he's doing uh he's incredible I, <laughs> no one's doing that no one's on this level um i can't even think of youtubers in general like maybe i'm not like a big youtuber guy maybe but like i can't even think of any any regular youtubers that are going this hard not as if we're not regular youtubers i'm sorry no i just mean like in, not even in our space like forget our space like i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just talking in youtube in general i don't know anyone that's this, this hard i was like i'm not kidding like when when my boss was like oh he's this is bad when he's talking about me it was like oh he's this fantastic editor i'm like i'm looking at this video i'm like no i'm fucking not <laughs> what the fuck uh, unreal Un it, it really shatters my own confidence in a way, in a, almost in a really bad way. Actually, it's almost dangerous. <laughs> Where I'm like, I'm looking at my video. I'm just like, yeah, I didn't just put a fucking JPEG on there and just move it a little bit. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. Uh, but that's just me. Not the video sucks. It's just unreal. Um, but the, so what he's talking about here is this idea that the this like this whole thing of platforms and content um that is really starting to dictate the way we experience these things and is such a core part of our everyday lives not only is it um from japan but it was another aspect it was like it was from japan and it was way early oh, it was something i don't know it was something like something to do with cars <laughs> look there's just a lot in here it's 30 minutes and you know again i think there's yeah, Joe really respects his audience in, in a way that like he's not babying or, or pandering to anyone where he, he's just gonna go and but he's not being super esoteric either I think there is something where you can kind of get where he's coming from um but it's not like I don't know it's it's um not super babyish it's not for beginners or something you know it is for people who really care 
and are willing to listen and willing to maybe rewind a couple of times and, and really absorb what he and Mike and he and Mark are saying. Um, again, the fact you got Mark Steinberg in here is great too. I think that's his name. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. No, it just really shatters my confidence. You see. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it, it's overwhelmingly good. I can't really, I can't really fathom it. It's it's impressive. It's just really incredible. I'm sorry I don't have too much else concrete. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm speechless, actually. I can't even think of it. The the linking with Bakuman was really smart. Um, and maybe I'm, I can't even say, like, I would want more analysis of Bakuman here and just kind of looking further deeper into that. But because I, I really liked where it went. I really liked that it was more conceptual and uh, talking more broadly and talking it's ex mind expanding in ways that you wouldn't expect. Like, we're going to talk about cars. You know, we're going to talk this idea with um, eye mode. I had never heard of eye mode or is it? Yeah, I forget the name of it. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, you know, the, 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 this thing that like predated the iOS and Android systems a decade um, and was really kind of the way that we were able to experience. I love the inclusion of the David Lynch quote where you know, it's it's like it get real. You can't experience a whole movie on your fucking phone. But um, the fact that he, you know, yeah, you actually can and can. It's like, well, that says how it's happening because this is how, you know, this is just how we end up doing it through convenience and accessibility. And um, I like Mark's point towards the end where Netflix definitely plays a part in mainstreaming and uh, democratizing anime in a way. Um, although I also appreciate that he also talks about, about a bit about torrenting. This like torrenting's definitely made that possible because otherwise you'd have to find the anime. You'd have to like go to Japan and find this stuff. Uh, especially I imagine before the fucking VHS era, you fucking get it. Like the idea of VHS um, and physical media uh, in general, like the and sharing the sharing this stuff was a huge kind of like one of the first one of the reasons why anime started being popular in the way that it is because we're able to recommend these titles we can, we can recommend these these shows that are no longer airing on television and say hey go watch this like the idea of a, of somebody watching a tv show the way they are now is complete is really you know thanks to the idea advent of physical media of the vhs and like actually recording something and watching it over and over and over again um just super rudimentary compared to what joe's talking about with um you know the accessibility of the platform and and people are, are, uh, amassing to that platform like it's really important that it, just because this platform exists doesn't mean that people are going to it right like you have like a uh, quibi or something that like just because it's a platform that has content on it doesn't mean people are going to go to that thing and it, it, we are kind of starting to see that with um some of these like upstarts after net after netflix has skyrocketed and disney plus has obviously uh been around for a couple of years now um, there's other people trying to make their own platforms and succeeding or failing at that type of thing. Um, and seeing where that comes from and seeing the origins of those, I think it's a way more important video than the thumbnail or title will really tell you, actually. Um, not that they're bad. They're good. <laughs> I especially really like the, um, the thumbnail. It's really nice looking. But that's just me as a, a, a trademark dummy with with thumbnails. <laughs> um, man, it's, it's it's incredible. Maybe you know, I, maybe I think that's think I've talked about it enough. Yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the video way a lot. I more I think I more like revered it, you know, like a like an intimidating. Uh, oh my god kind <laughs> of like, and then I'm like, wow, that was fun. I had a great time. It was more like. <laughs> and also i appreciated um being featured in any way in this video with digest like that was really sweet um and i can kind of see where it was coming the implementation of it where this here it's like the you know the idea of youtube now there's more content that's being made about the content you know like the idea of criticism and uh me talking about other people's youtube videos which are in turn talking about content so i'm i'm twice derivative baby <laughs> <laughs> me talking about you talking about this you know yeah it's okay uh yeah i really enjoyed it um but more again i more like was in complete shock and awe <laughs> i'm like how the fuck <laughs> mm, 
I just got to get better at After Effects. Literally every single time I have to go on After Effects, I have to look up a guide how to do it and then just follow that one like slavishly. I can, I'm not at the point yet where I can just make something in an After Effects and just have full confidence in doing it. I just, I'm not there yet. I have it at least, and I've been using it a little bit, but that, that's the thing, right? I can't even, I can't even start to picture some of these things that you're, like the way that you were describing, um, I forget what point it was, but like you have like the three um, postage stamps and the different illustrations. Like, yes, there's little illustrations in these things too. Mm, it's great. Oh, it's <laughs> a little more jealousy starting to come through. Um, but like the, the the three here, I'm like the the vision of that. I don't even like how. <laughs> how do you do that? I just like oh yes, meltdown. Um, great video. Thank you. <laughs> Loved it. Thanks for following me back on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I should probably cut that before I uh, <laughs> before I embarrass myself further. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are great. You have a great week. Yo, peace.